All right. Welcome and thank you for joining. My name is Beatrice Pachas and I am a health educator for Community Health at Atlantic Health System. Today's webinar, The Mediterranean Diet, is presented by Evelyn Manolfo. Registered Dietitian Nutrition is from the ShopRite of Parsippany. Before we begin, I have a few announcements. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared in its entirety on our website. All participants are muted. And if you have a question, please use the Q&A for questions or chat for comment. We will try to get through all questions at the end of the presentation. At Atlantic Health System, we care and provide a variety of mental health services at various locations. Our team features highly trained psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, and licensed clinicians. Learn more about our behavioral health services by visiting AtlanticHealth.org slash behavioral info or schedule an appointment for a behavioral health service by calling 1-888-247-1400. I will now turn it over to Evelyn. Evelyn, I believe you're muted. Hi guys, can you hear me now? All right, wonderful. So good morning, everybody. I am so excited to talk to you about one of my greatest passions and that's uh, eating for your health with the Mediterranean diet. So, um, you know, listen in. I hope you get some tips um, to help improve your life and feel better and have more energy. So I'm just going to uh, begin to share here. All right, here we go. Okay. So what are you gonna learn today about the Mediterranean diet? So you're gonna actually learn what the Mediterranean diet is. You're going to learn food groups that are part of the Mediterranean diet. You're gonna learn about foods that are not part of the Mediterranean diet. You're gonna understand the health benefits of following the Mediterranean diet. And you're going to get some shopping and menu planning tips to follow uh, the Mediterranean diet. So uh, let's see here. I, we have some maps here on the right. So I just want you to take a look. So for the traditional way, the Mediterranean diet is the traditional way of eating from the countries surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. So foods of these regions vary from country to country. However, similar features include most, they all ate whole and minimally processed foods, vegetables, fruits, legumes, beans, whole grains, nuts, olives, herbs, spices, some seafood and wine. So if you take a look at um, these maps here on the right, you can see there are many countries in the Mediterranean Sea region, right? So let's see, we've got um, Spain, uh, France, Monaco, the Balkan Peninsula countries like Croatia and Albania, Italy, Greece, Malta, Turkey, Syria, Cyprus, Lebanon, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. So there's many countries here. Uh, so that's the exciting part of the Mediterranean cuisine. There's just so many flavors uh, from, from what grows in these countries uh, to make it exciting and delicious. So we know about foods that are included in the Mediterranean diet now. What about foods that are not included in the Mediterranean diet? So you probably, most of you can guess, processed foods, right? Processed foods like refined grains, white flours, frozen and convenience meals, fast food, sugary drinks, junk, junk food, chips and candy, et cetera. That is not part of the Mediterranean diet. Again, whole foods are part of it. And plant foods. Okay, so the Mediterranean diet is the eating pattern that evolved over centuries as a result of history, wars, geography, and food availability. This is what helped to shape the Mediterranean diet. So the sunny, warm climate of the Mediterranean promotes a wide array of wild foods available, such as greens and herbs that could be foraged, and a multitude of plants that could be cultivated. Cattle is not suited for the dry, rocky terrain of the Mediterranean, so cattle cannot, uh, cannot thrive there. 
However, at the time, fish were plentiful and abundant in the sea. So the Mediterranean, as we know, has a sunny and long growing season. And because of that, many wonderful plant foods grow easily there, including, and I'm sure all of you um, have heard of most of these, you may be familiar with them from when your grandmother used to cook them. So let's talk about the many plant foods that grow easily in the Mediterranean. All kinds of leafy greens, right? Like herbs, broccoli rob, escarole, kale, tomatoes, garlic, eggplant, artichokes, peppers, summer squash, zucchini, and potatoes, to name a few. <laughs> um, whole grains such as bulgur and farro, and legumes such as baba, be baba beans, garbanzo beans, peas, and lentils. As well as all these wonderful plants and vegetables, how about all the trees and vines that thrive abundantly in the Mediterranean? Trees and vines such as citrus trees, pomegranate, fig trees, grapevines, and fat-rich plants like olives, nuts, and seeds. Okay, so grapes, right? Grapes grew abundantly. Grapes were harvested and turned into wine, and olives were pressed into the golden nectar that is olive oil. Goat and sheep milk were preserved as fermented dairy products such as yogurt and cheese. So when did this Mediterranean diet awareness started? It, it started actually some 60 years ago when renowned health researcher, Dr. Ansel Keys first started studying the Mediterranean diet. He observed that in poorer regions of the Mediterranean, people had a much lower risk of cardiovascular disease. These populations were much healthier than compared to the wealthier nations who ate a Western diet. So in the Western diet, what do we eat mostly? We eat mostly animal foods like red meat, animal fats, lots of dairy, refined grains, sugary and processed foods. Hence, the poor man's diet of the Mediterranean turned out to be an ideal way of eating for sustainable health due to its high level of wholesome fiber. So when I say wholesome fiber, I'm just referring to uh, fiber that's just found naturally in whole foods. So wholesome fiber and antioxidants. Antioxidants are abundant in whole foods, whole plant foods. Antioxidants can be vitamins and minerals, and you'll learn more about that in just a minute. So eating the Mediterranean way became associated with improved heart and overall health. So the power of fiber from whole plant foods, right? So whole plant foods, from produce like fruits and vegetables, whole grains, seeds and nuts contain really good sources of fiber and antioxidants. So did you know that fiber and whole plant foods breaks down in our gut to nutrients that feed and sustain healthy intestinal flora? So healthy intestinal flora, what is that? That's actually the bacteria that's in our gut. So when we were born, when we were newborns, we were born with billions of colonies of healthy bacteria. That, those billions of colonies of healthy bacteria are our first line of defense for our immunity. It keeps us healthy. So when we have viruses or bacterias or um, illnesses or germs and it hits our gut, uh, the healthy bacteria attack and destroy it. So that's why it's very important to give this uh, healthy bacteria in our gut, healthy foods, just like we need to give ourselves healthy foods to be strong. So again, uh, this intestinal flora feeds on the fiber from the fiber foods. The fiber foods that break down in our gut is called prebiotics, right? Have anybody heard of that term prebiotics? Uh, and, this, and the stores, when I'm in ShopRite, in the Parsippany store, in the West Colville store, people often ask me, what's a prebiotic? And that is a, a type of fiber that it can be broken down in our gut to feed the good bacteria in our gut. So like we said, the gut is the frontline defender of our immunity. It supports our immunity. So we need to keep it healthy and strong with giving it lots of whole fiber foods. So you would think that's a win-win, right? Well, guess what? There's another win to this because fiber also binds with the cholesterol um, particles in our digestive system, right? So the fiber 
binds with the co um, cholesterol particles and moves it out of our body on top of it, right? So it moves the unhealthy cholesterol out of our body. So what do you think happens then? Our cholesterol gets lowered. So we get healthier that way too. So on the right, that was kind of like my aha moment when I saw this little diagram. So I just wanna review it with you too. So it'll help make more sense for you. So you can see these two triangles, right? So the first triangle that's upright on the left, that represents the Mediterranean diet which is a uh, diet loaded with high fiber, whole natural foods. So if we look at the bottom of this Mediterranean pyramid, what do we see? We see lots and lots of whole fiber foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, right? So the more of this we eat, you see that little arrow that points to all those healthy foods that says microbiota symbiosis. That means the microbiota in our gut, the bacterial colonies in our gut um, have, are in symbiosis, which means harmony, balance, they're healthy, they work together. That's what we want, right? So that's why keep eating this way, you'll have a healthy gut. Now, on the other side, the Western diet pyramid, the inverted pyramid, right? What's on the top of this pyramid? Processed foods, tons of animal food, foods with hardly any fiber in it, right? So you could see when we're always eating foods with hardly any fiber or no fiber, what happens? It, it's what we call microbiota dysbiosis. Dysbiosis meaning it's not in harmony, it's not in balance. We kind of feel sick, we kind of feel blah, we kind of feel lethargic, we don't have energy, get up and go. And it's not very supportive to our immunity either. And we can become more susceptible to illnesses. So. You want to try to avoid eating this way all the time. Okay, so did you know also whole fiber foods are more filling and tend to have less calories than low or no fiber foods, which is a factor as to why the Mediterranean diet can promote weight loss. We like that <laughs> for those of us who want to lose weight. In turn, now that we're eating these whole fiber foods, we're having a healthier gut, we're losing some weight. What happens to our metabolic syndrome? That goes down too. What happens when our metabolic syndrome goes down? Metabolic syndrome is our, our waistline, right? Our, our waistline starts to get smaller. Our hypertension now starts to get reduced and improves. This in, in concert or in total now helps to prevent heart attacks, strokes, Type 2 diabetes, which is a biggie, right? Unfortunately, this has become an epidemic along with metabolic syndrome. So eating this way, you're going to decrease your risks for all of these things. And hence, you're going to um, decrease premature death. So um, as one of your learning objectives, right? You're, you know now that eating the, metabolic, um, the Mediterranean way can decrease metabolic syndrome, hypertension, high blood pressure, help prevent heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. We're gonna, we're gonna test you at the end, just kidding. <laughs> so now, remember we were talking about antioxidants, right? So antioxidants, every different color of fruit or vegetable you see represents a different antioxidant. So antioxidants in these foods can also benefit brain and eye health too. Hence, it's going to help protect us against cognitive decline as we age, which is huge now because, you know, we're hearing more and more about Alzheimer's and more and more um, how that's become even more prevalent now. Well, eating this way is going to also prevent that from happening. All these reasons and more are why doctors often recommend eating the Mediterranean way to improve health and protect against inflammation and chronic disease. Now. Who here knows what inflammation is? I know. So inflammation is really what, what starts disease, right? Inflammation is when the body is um, not doing well. There's, there's inflammation. So if you hurt yourself, right? You feel that pain and that redness, that's inflammation. So what causes inflammation in our body and in our cardiovascular system, um, not eating a whole food plants, and fiber, so the cholesterol's building up in our arteries, we're getting plaque, uh, our, the cholesterol's increasing, the triglycerides are increasing, we're becoming obese. This is all inflammation and inflammation causes chronic disease. 
So again, eating the more vegetables, you prevent this from happening. This is called eating an anti-inflammatory way, eating wholesome fiber foods from plant foods. You're decreasing your inflammation. You're feeling better. You're decreasing your risk for disease. All right, so let's talk about the antioxidants in plant foods. Now, look at this beautiful rainbow of color of fruits and vegetables. So um, we do children's programs as well. And how do we remind kids to eat lots of fruits and vegetables? We tell them eat a rainbow of color every day. Well, it's the same for the adults. Eat a rainbow of color every day. Um, so we know many antioxidants are found in plant foods. Antioxidants protect plants from disease, viruses and radiation. So guess what happens to us when we eat these plant foods? We in turn also ingest these antioxidants and we get the same protect, protection and health benefits as well. So what are antioxidants? So they're vitamins, right? There's lots of antioxidants in, uh, in vitamins in plants like vitamins A, C and E. Um, there's some B vitamins, minerals such as zinc and selenium. Phytochemicals have, I don't know if any of you have heard the term phytochemicals before, but phytochemicals are actually plant chemicals or plant compounds, right? That are found in the plants. Um, some of you might've heard these terms before. There's flavonoids. There's carotenoids, right? I think you've all heard of carotenoids when our mothers would say, eat your vegetables, eat your carrots, they're good for your eyes. So all the orange and red and yellow vegetables, carotenoids. Polyphenols, like in apples, onions, grapes, lignans that are in whole grains and beans. And phenolic acids, just to name a few. So the Mediterranean eating and lifestyle, doesn't this look nice, right? All these beautiful foods, relaxation, some wine. So the key of the Mediterranean diet is to focus on the main principles of the diet, right? Eating a whole foods diet with a focus on whole fiber from plant foods, vegetables, fruit, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. It's important also on top of all this, right? But this is simple food, it's not as, hard as you would think. It's just eating these foods simply. We're supposed to be taking time to enjoy our food mindfully. So that's half the battle too, right? Americans were on the go. We're, go we're going from point A to point B. We're stopping at fast food and grabbing a burger. Oh no. We have to take the time to enjoy our food mindfully. Okay, so all this talk about plant foods, right? So I, and I think a lot of us were brought up, including myself, to think that, oh, well, if you don't have any meat in your meal, you're not getting any protein, so how are you gonna fill up? And you know, a lot of us raised our kids that way, I'm guilty too. Um, but now I have learned and I have um, become so aware um, through some real health professionals um, uh, practicing functional medicine, and I've become actually, um, aware and educated from medical doctors who have become functional med medical doctors who practice functional medicine, a fast way to feel better, to bring the um, inflammation and pain down in our body, to bring the disease down in our body is to eat mostly plants. So to answer the question, how am I gonna get protein if I'm eating mostly plants? Guess what? There's, there's um, amino acids. So some of you who took science, I don't know, you remember what amino acid is, but I'll tell you, and this is basic science 101. Amino acid is a building block of protein, right? So there are 20 amino essential amino acids that we all need to get our, um, our essential complete proteins every day. Well, guess what? Each plant food contains a set of amino acids. So if we're eating plant foods every day, they all combine to get all the 20 um, essential amino acids we need for complete protein. So a complete protein in a plant food is what we call a complementary protein. So let's take a look. So what's an example of a complementary protein? Well, if we combine grains and beans, that's a complementary protein because there are some essential um, amino acids in the grains and some in the beans. So you combine them, that's a complementary protein. Also nuts and seeds, are complementary protein to beans and legumes. So if you're not able to combine them um, all at each meal, if you're just eating them through the day, it will make up for a complete protein, so not to worry. 
talk about plant power again. Soy, soy is a legume. Soy actually contains all the essential amino acids. So that's a complete or complementary protein. It's also a good source of healthy fats and phytochemicals, plant chemicals that are good for us. Seeds are huge now, right? Oh my gosh, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, sesame seeds, so many seeds, sunflower seeds. Uh, they're power foods too. So um, you can't go wrong when you sprinkle some seeds into, into your food each day. But let's talk about seeds like hemp seed, chia seed, complete protein. There are whole grains like amaranth and quinoa. They're also complete protein. So using any of these foods along with combining other plant protein sources during the day will get you all the essential amino acids, hence protein needs met. Plus you're filling up on fiber too. So you'll be surprised how satisfied you really are going to feel. Okay, so let's talk more about the Mediterranean diet. So I don't know if any of you've seen, there's a website, nutrition website called Old Ways. And this is one of their suggestions for following the Mediterranean diet. So they put out, Old Ways put out this Mediterranean diet pyramid, right? So, um, well, look at what's at the bottom of that pyramid, physical activity. That's a huge part of, you know, Mediterranean lifestyle, being active. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But that's just, well, food is really, really important. But what's right up there with the food is the physical activity. And whether or not you can go to a gym, there's so many other ways you can get physical activity, right? Parking further at the mall or the supermarket, getting your steps in, walking around the store, um, lots of things, dancing, health, you know, gardening, it's gardening time now. That's great physical activity, house cleaning, chores, physical activity, walking going to the gym, oh gosh, on YouTube, they've got all kinds of videos now for yoga and to do um, easy workouts at home. Okay, so we covered the physical activity part. Let's talk about the rest of the food part. So according to the um, Mediterranean diet pyramid, eat the majority, like we were saying, of vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, legumes, potatoes, whole grains, herbs, and spices. That should be the majority. So you can eat in moderation. Um, it's up to you how you feel, but some seafood, poultry, eggs, plant-based or dairy options like cheese and yogurt. Eat rarely, red meat, sugar-sweetened beverages, added sugars, processed meat, refined grains and flours, refined oils and other highly processed foods. Um, Drink lots of water, right? At least six to eight glasses of water a day. And I know um, many people have said to me, uh, it's really hard for me to drink water. Well, look, I understand there's lots of other ways you can get that. And you, you know, herb teas. If you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, they're actually mostly water. So you're, you're getting a good amount of hydration eating that way. Uh, lots, lots of other ways you can do it. Let's see here. Um, brew teas, right? Now you can make your own sun tea. Okay. And I like this healthy eating plate as well. This has been put out by the Harvard School of Public Health. Um, and you can see what's half of this plate. Well, the first half is two thirds vegetables, right? You think we are um, promoting vegetables enough in this presentation, but Again, any, any reliable website or evidence-based website is always gonna tell you vegetables first. So two thirds vegetables, one third fruit, um, a quarter is whole grain, and then the other quarter is healthy protein. So again, um, any kind of a plant protein is fine. If you wanna put some animal protein in that, that's fine. Lean animal protein, hopefully. Um, what else do they have here? Again, lots of water, right? Drink water, herbal teas. Um, I believe coffee, as long as it would count as water if it's decaf. Reason being uh, coffee has caffeine in it and coffee could be a, a little bit of, of a diuretic. So I would say lots of water, herbal teas, um, decaf coffee would count, vegetables, fruits. Oh, soup is really good too. Um, if you make soups, that's a great way to get um, hydrated. Okay, and uh, try to make most of your grains whole whenever possible, right? So what's a whole grain? Some of you may already know. 
um, whole wheat bread. Oatmeal is a whole grain. Actually, corn is a whole grain. Brown rice, right? And um, a lot of people say, well, how do I know when I'm buying something it's actually a whole grain? It's confusing because there's multi-grain, there's 12 grain, there's 10 grain. It needs to stay whole on the package. And if you're still not sure, the first ingredient on the ingredient list needs to say whole whatever, whole wheat, whole oat, whole wine, rye, whole corn. It needs to um, be the first ingredient on the package. It says whole on it. All right. So you guys are like experts on the food part now. What about um, the lifestyle part of the Mediterranean way of life? So it's not just the foods that makes up the essence of the Mediterranean diet. Social culture plays a, a big part too, right? So you can see in these pictures, meals are savored and enjoyed with others. So I know it's not always possible when we're on the go or we're working on the road, but whenever possible, try to have the family meals. If you have kids, family meals are key with kids. Um, families, the, the evidence shows, the science shows, when you have kids, school age, and you're sitting together at dinner most nights, these kids are going to do better in school. They're going to get better grades. They're, they're um, going to be healthier. They're going to be happier. They're going to have better mental health. So I know it's old fashioned. A lot of us, when we were young, you know, that's how it was. We had our family meals. Do your best to do that for your families as well. If you're a senior, socializing is so important as well. You don't want to be isolated. You want to get out there and, and do fun things. So enjoy it with your family, with your friends, whenever possible. Okay, so Mediterranean eating and lifestyle. So remember we were saying before how physical activity is another important piece of health in the Mediterranean lifestyle. Um, so actually physical activity was a big part of everyday life in the Mediterranean culture because they didn't just jump in the car and go to shop right for everything, right? They had to forage and cultivate their own food. They had to fish in the ocean. So that's like highly physical, isn't it? You know, <clears throat> planting and working the crops in the fields, foraging the foods, cultivating the foods, going to the ocean and fishing. They had to be active to survive. And at the end of their meal, they would relax and enjoy, and then they'd all go for a walk at the end of the day. So today in the US, since our lifestyle is not like that, it's not conducive to do it, all the time, we don't have to um, forage our foods and cultivate it, but we do have to make sure we get physical activity in some way. Um, and again, uh, evidence, scientific evidence shows we're supposed to be getting 150 minutes each week of moderate physical activity. So what's moderate physical activity? You know, it's like when you're moving, you're breathing heavily. Um, so, we have to find ways to do it. And if you, you know, whether it's the gym or going for a walk or uh, at home, or like we said, dancing, Tai Chi, doing things you like, you know, I don't, I don't want physical activity to, to be a grind for anybody. Or when I said, you have to, it's like, do things that you like, because that's half, half the battle. If you like to garden, even like um, when the weather isn't good. And I know I, I uh, talk to a lot of seniors at, at ShopRite, and they're, they're like, oh, the weather isn't good. Well, go to the mall, get your walking shoes on, walk around, do laps. There's lots of ways you can incorporate walking and physical activity into your day. Here, this rectangle on the right, we see this person going for a walk, eating the Mediterranean way. They quit smoking, so their health is improving. They, their, their points for healthy living is way up there. All right, so now we're gonna, now that you guys know and understand the Mediterranean diet, you know, how do you actually do it? How do you bring this into your house? So we're gonna talk about tips and menu planning. So what do you think the key is? The key is stocking your pantry, right? Getting these foods into your house, into your pantry, so they're available and you can actually eat them every day. So uh, stocking the pantry helps you to prepare healthier balanced meals and snacks, less grocery store trips, speeds up your meal prep, increases your uh, uh, variety of meals available, and it creates less impulse to go and get fast food and order takeout. Food is always healthier when we make it ourselves, right? So let's start with pantry 
top pantry staple foods. Well, big surprise, vegetables and fruit, right? And that can include, um, you know, what the pantry, when we talk about the pantry, the pantry includes dry, shelf stable, refrigerator, and frozen. So there's all kinds of uh, varieties of food we can keep, right? In our uh, pantry, dry, shelf stable, refrigerator, and frozen. So let's start with produce, vegetables and fruit. And uh, fresh is fine, uh, local is fine. You can also do frozen and canned. So whatever it's gonna take to make it easy and available for you to have every day is the right way to do this. And frozen is, is fine because what, what's frozen? They're picked right off of the field and they're flash frozen right on the premises. So all the nutrition is locked in there. Of course, um, frozen and heavy source sauces, I would, would say that's a sometimes food. But um, you know, just fre fresh uh, uh, frozen vegetables are fine. You can, after you, if you could cook in the microwave, that's fine. You could add a little olive oil, a little salt, pepper, whatever you like, uh, spices, herbs, it's all good. But you can see like the variety of things you can do with vegetables and fruit. Look at this nice um, dish down below. It looks like it's just some whole grain pasta with lots of delicious vegetables, nice rainbow there. Um, you know, some whole grain cereal and fruit little touch of Greek yogurt. Um, whole grain items are real uh, important pantry staple foods, right? So oatmeal, um, whether it's uh, rolled or instant steel cut, oh my gosh, steel cut. Lots of doctors recommend steel cut oats. Um, I, 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 get, I honestly, um, I just say all oatmeal is good, but there, I, there must apparently must be some evidence that shows steel cut oats just help um, lower the, the um, cholesterol and the triglycerides. They must just really pull that out and higher in fiber. But any oatmeal is fine, anything you can do. So uh, whole grain cereals, whole grain pastas, whole grain flours, whole grain baking mixes, whole grain bread, crackers and grains like brown rice, wild rice, barley, quinoa, buckwheat and gold, uh, bulgur, all wonderful, wonderful whole grains. Um, you know, and again, in the pantry, you want to be able to make some quick, easy meals. So tomato sauce and tomato paste. So you can see some nice meals here. Um, that looks like there's some whole grain or wild rice with, with veggies. It looks like there's some butternut squash in there. Um, some yummy um, pasta with tomatoes and veggies. Okay, pantry staples, another top one, beans and legumes. Look at these wonderful dishes with the beans. Getting hungry already. Bean soups, bean salads. Um, so beans uh, and legumes dried and canned are fine. So if you have some cans uh, of beans, can of beans, uh, just open it up, rinse and drain it first, right? And if you rinse it, drain it, you get that extra, if there's any salt in there, the excess salt out. Or low sodium canned beans now, you can find those too. Um, so beans and legumes are just great, right? For salads, you have uh, some greens and some tomatoes, you throw some beans in there delicious. Some fruit, some nuts, then it's like a full meal. You can do it in soups, sides. They're super high fiber, plant protein, loaded with fibers, uh, vitamins, and minerals. So how about nuts, nut butters, and seeds? Yes, excellent, right? Plant protein, um, good fiber, good plant, uh, healthy plant fats. It's the monounsaturated fat, the heart healthy fat. And that's great to have for snacks, salads, sandwiches. You can pair that any nut butter you like with, with fruit. You could put it on whole grain bread or whole grain crackers. And then here's the seeds that we were talking about at the bottom. There's so many seeds, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, the size of the limit, hemp seeds. And um, these are, you know, you can use them for so many things. Uh, and you can just sprinkle it on a salad or in your oatmeal or your cereals, salads, lots of ways to do that. All right, uh, another favorite uh, pantry staple of mine are the jarred veggies like olives, uh, Kalamata olives are my favorite, pitted Kalamata olives are one of my favorites to keep um, in the pantry. Adds so much flavor to really anything, um, salads, sandwiches, Capers, um, bell, roasted bell peppers are wonderful. Sun-dried tomatoes and artichokes, marinated artichokes add so much flavor and texture and color 
to your meals, your side dishes, your salads, lots of great Mediterranean flavors, great with pasta, etc. And good old canned seafood, right? Tuna, sardines, anchovies, loaded with omega 3s good lean protein, great to have to put in your salads um, for extra flavor to make anything taste better. Okay. So um, now with, we have the meat, fish, and poultry item category. Now the Mediterranean made this the side to their plant food. So I'm gonna suggest the same, make this the side to your plant foods. Plant foods, number one. So there's lots of wonderful ways to include meat, fish, and poultry items into your daily menu, right? There's a beautiful uh, stew here with some lean um, meat and some delicious um, do broth and uh, all kinds of wonderful vegetables, potatoes, root veggies. There's a wonderful looking um, chicken noodle soup, right? So great, again, great broth, great vegetables, um, some noodles or some whole grains, some chicken. You can even do tacos, right? Whole grain taco shell or whole grain wrap, loaded with all kinds of wonderful veggies and avocado and whatever you want to do, a fish taco or a lean meat taco or a bean taco or whatever you want. And some, there's some nice boiled fish here with veggies. So sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want with it. So um, along with keeping meat, fish, and poultry items, fresh or frozen, right, in your pantry, broth, stocks, they have lots and lots of low so sodium options today. So I would recommend low sodium. Cooking sprays, oils, and some butter and soft margarine in moderation. You keep those in your pantry. And what about good old fashioned batch cooking? I'm sure all of you have done this at some point. You make a big pot of stew or veggie chili or soup. Um, you make a whole pot of it. You can't really eat it, all of it in one sitting, right? So oftentimes you'll freeze half of it and enjoy the rest during the week. But those are all, all great to have, whether it's casseroles or stews or or other, uh, you know, meat dishes, whatever you want. Meat dishes loaded with veggies, of course. <laughs> All right. So another top pantry sta staple are seasonings and herbs. So we know it's the spice of life, right? It gives flavors and character and personality to any dish. You actually can tra transform any dish into a, an international dish from around the world with spices and herbs. They have so many varieties today, right? So, um, you know, in your pantry, spices, fresh and dried herbs, garlic powder, onion powder. Nowadays, you can probably go to any store and you see so many seasoning blends available to transform your dish, like Herb de Provence, there's Middle Eastern um, blends like Zatar, there's all kinds of Asian, there's Indian, there's sky's the limit today. And then of course, maybe some wine, some soy sauce, some anchovy paste, some teriyaki sauce, Ponzu sauce, extracts, different extracts, vanilla mint, citrus. Okay, so also a, a nice little tip to keep your herbs fresh and longer when you bring home your herbs and you wash them, just roll them in a paper towel and put them in a Ziploc bag and, and they'll, they'll last a lot longer. So you'll have a lot longer shelf life with that. You can also do, um, another option would be to place the herbs stem side down in a shallow container of water in the fridge, like you would with flowers. And you can also do this technique with veggies with a long stem, like asparagus kale, any veggie with a long stem will work as well. Okay, easy meals. Let's talk about easy meals. So you've probably all seen like this bowl grazed, right? It's big, you can do it with anything. Um, there's the OCI bowls that the, the teenagers, the kids are into, um, fire bowls, right? It's the same idea where you have fruit and a grain and, and a smoothie poured in there. But you can really do a bowl with any meal. Like on the left here, you see some oatmeal with berries and banana, looks so yummy. To the right, this is, um, you could do any bowl here. It was a grain with um, somebody roasted vegetables and and sweet potatoes. So they put their roast veggies in there and some leafy greens and their grain and their avocado and their egg. They seasoned it, that looks marvelous. That's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And then overnight notes is really big, right? So um, that's a great tip. If, if you just wanna to try to eat more the Mediterranean way and start your breakfast out right, there's lots of ways you can do overnight oats. Um, one way is the night before you take just to give you an idea, 
half a cup of milk of choice, whether it's plant-based or dairy milk or water, that's fine too, it works. A third cup of rolled oats, half a mashed banana. If you wanna put some chopped nuts in there, you can, that's optional and sprinkle it with cinnamon. Put it in your Tupperware container overnight and voila, uh, the next morning you'll have delicious overnight oats and you can uh, heat them in the microwave if you like just to warm it up and top it with fruit if you like. All right, so we were talking before about roasting vegetables. I'm sure a lot of you out there have done it. Isn't that the greatest? I just love roasted vegetables. So many reasons. The roasting caramelizes the vegetables and brings out delicious uh, caramelized flavors, just really enhances the flavors. So you can really literally roast any vegetable. Um, a tip is uh, when, when preparing, cut your vegetables in equal sizes so they will, um, roast evenly at the same time. So you can throw all your veggies in a bowl, right? And toss with one to two tablespoons of olive oil and then just pour the veggies on your sheet pan and there'll be remaining oil in the bowl. So that's fine, right? If you wanna just kind of um, limit the amount of oil and don't crowd the veggies, very important. Evenly distribute them on a rimmed sheet pan uh, because they'll just crisp up and caramelize real nice because if they're really crowded, they'll steam and they won't get the, the toast, the, the crispiness. And then another tip here is um, you can put them directly on the pan as opposed to parchment paper and foil because um, that may retain more liquid and they'll be less crispy, but that's up to you. It'll still be delicious. Okay, so you can roast veggies individually, right? So um, you can ensure control. So you can remove your vegetables at the perfect moment, or you can pair simil similar density of vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower together, or harder, denser like squash and potatoes, or thinner and lighter like asparagus, green beans, and mushrooms because they all have similar cooking time. Or if you hate scrubbing pans, you can roast in stages. So um, start with the hardest vegetable first, right? Like carrot or potato then the medium vegetable, uh, density vegetable like squash. And then after they're, they're cooking and, and somewhat tender, then you add your, your soft vegetables, like for example, green beans and mushrooms. And because that, the softer mushrooms um, are less cooking time. And as far as roasting potatoes go, you can parboil them first, eight to 12 minutes. Uh, and then, and then uh, roast them or just cut them really small, like dice them and they'll cook a lot faster. So in general, um, you know, uh, there's no wrong or right way, but just as a guide, root vegetables will take longer because they're harder, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how small you cut them. For winter squash, like butternut and acorn, it can it could go from 20 to 60 minutes, again, depending on how small you cut them. Cruciferous vegetables, like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, sprout 15 to 25 minutes. Softer vegetables like zucchini and summer squash and bell peppers, 10 to 20 minutes. And thin vegetables like asparagus and green beans, 10 to 20 minutes. Onions, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how crispy you like them. So garlic, you don't wanna chop the garlic um, because then it, it'll burn. You wanna do whole peeled cloves or um, you can always use garlic powder too. All right, remember how we were talking about bowls, right? Such an easy, fast way. Um, to get to eat healthy, right? So here's just some examples of lunch and dinner bowls, right? So they're tasty, they're satisfying, and they're a strategic decision that will support your health. They, um, I've got a handy guide coming up next just so you can choose a variety of vegetables, grains, and proteins, and a few extras. So here's just a, a little chart here to, to give you an idea. So you can see your veggies for your lunch and dinner bowls, anything you like. The sky's the limit, the rainbow, right? Avocado, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, cucumber greens, green beans. I'm not gonna go down the whole list, but you can see there's lots of choices. You can steam, they could be uh, raw or uh, roasted, whatever you like. Or a lot of times I would just roast a whole bunch of vegetables, um, keep them in the oven. My whole grain, I would, um, you know, you cook whole grain like you would rice, really easy. So I'd have my cooked whole grain in the fridge. I'd have my roasted vegetables in the fridge. And it's just so easy to throw together. Like when I go to work shop, right? I make myself like just a lunch bowl to go in my Tupperware. Um, 
some veggies, whatever protein I want, whatever add-ons I want, and uh, dressing sauce. So you could see 30% veggies, 25% grain, 20% protein, and the extras. Okay, so we're at the end. In summary, eating uh, the Mediterranean way and living the Mediterranean way, right? We eat a whole foods diet with a focus on whole fiber from plants, vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains, nuts and seeds. It's important to take the time to savor and enjoy your food mindfully. Make time for socializing and have fun. Scientific evidence shows being social, physically active, uh, physically active and eating the Mediterranean way improves overall health and well-being. And don't we all want that? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your attention. I am at the ShopRites of West Caldwell and Parsippany, and I also have a colleague, Barbara, who's there. So, um, we, you know, just, just give me a, um, a phone call. And there's my number, 973-335-2625, extension 3001. Leave your name and number and I'll call you back because I'm not always in the store. I'm out doing events often as well. Or you can email me too at evelyn.minolfo at lakefern.com if you have any other questions. We, we are available for free, free consultations. So take advantage of that great service. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time. Thank you so much, Evelyn. So before we get, before we go any further, I did, um, just so everyone knows, I did put a quick little survey in the chat box for everyone to go through. So if you can please give us some feedback, we would greatly appreciate it. So now we're gonna go through some questions. Um, let's see here. So, one of the questions that we kept receiving, are we able to share PowerPoints at the end? I will be sharing the PowerPoints with everyone on a follow-up email. So please don't, um, don't hesitate to ask further questions with that follow-up email as well. Uh, next question, Evelyn, can you comment on organic versus non-organic fruits, vegetables, and grains? Sure, good question. I get that all the time. So, if, you know, there, there's, the thing is people, um, there's all kinds of budgets available. Um, so I have a couple of tips on that. If you want to eat organic, um, shop the circular. The ShopRite circular often has um, a variety of organic on sale. So um, that's a good way to stock up on our organic options, whether it's fresh uh, produce, uh, fresh or frozen produce um, or any other kinds of groceries. What else? Um, you know, non-GMO, there's lots of non-GMO, you know, it's all becoming, um, the majority of the foods are becoming labeled now. So there's lots of um, options if you want to go that way. Um, the other um, tip, if you want to do uh, organic, and you're just watching your money and sales and things like that. I totally understand. So um, the, I don't know, um, some of you may have heard there's a list called the Dirty Dozen, right? Uh, and the Dirty Dozen is the list of produce, fruits and vegetables that ha have the highest uh, amount of residue of pesticides. So you can easily Google that and it'll come up. So if you wanna try it that way, organic, um, try to do the uh, Dirty Dozen list organic when you can and one on sale. Um, it's a personal choice. I know, again, um, when I've worked with functional medicine doctors, so they're medical doctors that are also that are, are treating people naturally for disease, they do often recommend organic and non-GMO. So there's lots of ways you can do that uh, affordably um, if you want to nowadays. There's, there's a lot more options and availability. Thank you. Our next question, what is the difference between prebiotics and probiotics? Okay, great question. I get that all the time. So in my um, explanation, right, a lot of you had seen that we talked about what happens in our gut when we eat fiber. Fiber becomes a prebiotic. So sometimes, so we do make our own prebiotics by eating fiber foods, but a lot of times we see that, right, in the stores and we're like, what is that? So a prebiotic, if you find uh, a grocery at the stores and it says prebiotic, 
that contains some kind of a fiber. So when you ingest it, it will be the food for the um, bacteria in your gut. So a prebiotic is food. Um, it's some type of fiber that when you eat it and it becomes absorbed in your gut will be the food for the good bacteria in your gut, which is the probiotic. Now we can also, not to confuse you, but we also can buy probiotics, right? So um, I feel like if I was a teacher in the class, I'd say to the class, what do you think a probiotic is? And some of you would raise your hand and say, well, I buy probiotics as a supplement. And that's right, uh, a probiotic is a healthy bacteria and that you can buy that as a supplement as well. So not only do we have it in our gut, but we can buy it because a lot of us don't have a healthy balanced gut. Um, and I would say to the class, why do you think that is? And the reason why a lot of us don't have a healthy um, balanced bacteria is when we are sick and we have infection, what do we get? We get um, antibiotics. So the antibiotics do their job and, and destroy the infection, but it can also destroy the good bacteria in our gut, which is why when somebody says, do you recommend any supplements? And I always say food first, I'm a dietitian trained in food, but I will um, often recommend uh, a probiotic because we can all use the probiotic, which are the colonies, um, billions of colonies of bacteria, good bacteria that we can buy in a supplement for, form, um, you know, in a bottle. And there's, um, you can see like some of them, some of the supplements will, will show that there's lots of different strains of bacteria and some not as much, but um, I hope I explain that. <laughs> it's a lot of information. Okay, right, thank you, Kayla. <laughs> Thank you. Our next question, um, aren't shellfish high in cholesterol? Good question. So shellfish, so all natural foods, I don't believe, uh, I based on the new science, I mean, back in the day, right? Um, everything was, oh, cholesterol is bad for us. And, but the new science shows that the cholesterol in naturally occurring foods is not the cholesterol that's bad for us. So like in eggs, egg yolks, and seafood, if we eat those in moderation, along with lots of plant foods, we will be fine. We run into problems when we're not eating enough plant foods and we're eating too many of the animal foods. Thank you. There is caffeine in tea as well. Mm -hmm. Why is that different than coffee? Well, it's actually not. Um, different than coffee, right? It's, um, I recommend if you wanna stay hydrated, right? We all wanna stay hydrated, at least six, eight glasses of water a day. And it's, I speak to lots of people in the stores and some people tell me they struggle with that. So I recommend any kind of a um, decaffeinated tea or coffee, if you want that to be included in your, uh, your uh, water, uh, cups of water for the day. If you have any kind of caffeinated, so like in other words, herbal teas, right? Um, Non-caffeine drinks. Now, if you have um, tea with, with caffeine or caffeine with coffee with um, caffeine, I would not um, count that because that can be a diuretic, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Why no artificial sweetened beverages? I'm sorry, what was the question? Why no artificial sweetened beverages? Something about artificial sweetened beverages. I yes, know. I'm assuming they're asking um, why is it not recommended to have artificial sweetened beverages? Okay, good question. So artificial sweetened beverages are um, chemicals, processed, processed chemicals. So again, you know, I just want to tell you my favorite, one of my favorite saying is called there's no bad foods, there's bad portions, right? So I know people who, who drink who were drinking a lot of artificially sweetened beverages um, and they were not feeling well. And it's because it's chemicals. So a lot of chemicals are not good for us. So I would say limit them, limit artificial sweetened beverages. Are, are oh, getting tongue twisted today. Are alternative pastas like those made from lentil or chickpeas still considered a pasta, starch, or does they, or do they lean more towards um, being vegetables. I know those are, I can't believe the variety of pastas that are out there now, mm -hmm. right? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Wow. So I like them. You know, I like the bean pastas and well, you know, the pastas that contain vegetables and whole grains. I would still count those as 
like a pasta carb because now they've been processed somewhat, minimally processed, but processed. So I would count that as a pasta carb. Um, and they would act more like a, a pasta carb in our body. Although, um, let's talk about label reading, right? So I always tell everybody, read the label. So let's just say you got a, you bought a bean pasta, which I think is great. I think it's really healthy. They are high fiber, right? So if they're high fiber and you can look on the label, we say three grams of fiber or more a serving is considered a good source of fiber. So they, I believe they all are much higher than that. So if you're having a, a, a bean pasta, it's a high fiber food, there's plant protein in it. I think it's a really fantastic choice, right? But it does um, still act more like, um, like a pasta in our bodies as opposed to just if you're just eating just plain beans, because we'll have you guys think this out for a minute. What happens when we're just eating whole beans? It's a whole bean. So our digestive system, our body has to work super, super hard to break it down, to um, break down the fiber. So as opposed to um, a bean pasta that's already been broken down for us. So there's a little different, but I do highly recommend bean pastas because they're still really, healthy, they have plant protein, and they're still high in fiber. Thank you. We have a few minutes, so I'm going to go through these questions as, as much as we can. Um, how can someone with celiac disease incorporate whole grains in their diet? Excellent question. I happen to be um, a gluten intolerant person, so I, I feel your pain. But the good news is there's tons of whole gluten-free whole grains, right? Quinoa is a gluten-free whole grain. Amaranth is a gluten-free whole grain. Sorghum, um, wheat. There was another one that has wheat in it and uh, buckwheat, yeah, buckwheat. Even though it says wheat, buckwheat is a gluten-free whole grain. All you have to do is Google or DuckDuckGo, whatever, however you wanna go on the internet, gluten-free whole grains, and you'll get a huge list of them. And they're all readily available in supermarkets. They have tons of them. It's not that uncommon. Um, some people uh, do feel um, that, that they do better when they avoid gluten. So there's lots of gluten-free whole grain options. Corn is also a gluten-free whole grain. Lots of them for you. What steps do you recommend on how to freeze soup? I'm sorry, what was the first part of the question? What steps do you recommend on how to freeze soup? Okay, yes, good question. So, um, you know, they have the um, freezer safe containers now, right? BPA free and freezer safe containers. It'll say it right on the package. So you can use those. Also Ziploc bags, freezer safe Ziploc bags as well. Do you recommend a healthy cooking spray? Really any cooking spray, it's up to you is great. Um, cooking sprays are great because you know, they do, they do the job and it's just, it's portion control, right, on the oil. So anyone that you like. And let's see, I'm going to pronounce it. Let me know if it's correct. Can you pronounce acai again? I say oh, it. Oh, right. acai. Oh my God. Acai. So okay. I got, it, I got introduced to that by, um, we have lots of uh, dietetic interns, young students who introduced me to all these things. So acai. And I'm sorry, did somebody want to know about it? He just wanted to know how to pronounce it. Oh, yeah. I, yes. I've learned from my young students, it's ACI. ACI, <laughs> there you go. Thank you, everyone. Um, love roasting veggies. Is there a difference between Greek oil versus olive oil? Greek oil, okay. Well, olive oil, you know how we looked at that map with all the countries from the Mediterranean? I believe all of those countries are, have abundant olive trees, right? So you can get olive oil from any of these countries, Spain, France, Greece, Italy, Middle East, uh, North Africa. So, and they may vary because of temperatures and climate. So they're gonna have different tastes. But olive oil is olive oil for the most part. Of course, there's extra virgin olive oil, which is the first press. So it's gonna be greener. It's gonna have more of the olive, olive taste in it. And then um, there's more of the filtered which um, you can use for the filtered is good to use for cooking 
because then you won't have the free radical damage, you know, when you're cooking at a high heat. Uh, an extra virgin olive oil is just great, you know, just to pour on top of salads and things um, to give it that extra flavor and taste. Perfect, thank you. And I know we are over a little bit on the time, but we have one last question. Um, prefer a taste of real butter, but what is a better substitute? Sure. So again, my favorite, my favorite saying, no bad foods, bad portions. So if you use a little butter, is that bad? No, and you get the flavor. Um, as far as baking certain things like quick breads uh, and quick loaves, you could actually use fruit puree, like a pumpkin in place of butter. Um, you know, just vegetable oil because that's a, uh, a um, polyunsaturated oil, so it's far healthier. You could even use in baking avocado. But there are just times when I want a little butter and I do a little butter and I enjoy it and I'm, and I'm good, you know, I don't push it. So just watch the portions, right? Mm -hmm. And that is all for all our questions. So without further ado, thank you for joining us today. We kindly asked to take a few minutes after today's webinar to complete the program survey. The link to the survey has also been added to the chat for everyone's convenience. A special thank you to Evelyn. Thank you so much for dedicating your time and your expertise today. If anyone has any additional questions or comments, please send us an email to communityhealth at atlantichealth.org or call us at 844-472-8499. That does conclude our webinar. Have a great day, everyone. And again, Evelyn, thank you so much. We really appreciate all your expertise today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much, everybody. And try to fill out that survey because that really, I can show my owners how many people have seen this. So they'll continue to keep me um, providing these services that we that are so important that we so need. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody.